I'm delighted to hear it. Question number five, the Honourable David Parker. Thank you, Mr Speaker. My question is to the Minister for Communications and Information Technology. Will the government enforce its broadband contract with Chorus? Honourable Amy Adams. As I've previously stated, the government expects all parties to fulfil their contractual obligations with the government. The contract with Chorus contains a number of enforcement options if it were to fail to meet its obligations. The concern for the government is ensuring that New Zealanders get ultra-fast broadband to deliver high-quality, high-speed, world-leading telecommunications. That's our focus in this issue, and our consideration of options will be guided by the best way to achieve that. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Why was an independent review of the financial viability of Chorus not undertaken prior to awarding the broadband contract to Chorus? Honourable Amy Adams. Uh, Mr Speaker, while well, I would take issue with that, I can assure the member that considerable due diligence was done through the contract negotiations into the capability of parties to undertake uh, the obligations. What we have said consistently through this is that while there was an understanding that the copper price may well fall, nobody expected a price Order. drop of this level and none of the pricing methodologies therefore would have worked through such an unanticipated drop. And I would point out that that failure to anticipate such a drop was shared by members of the Labour Party who, as I recall, actively predicted that the copper price would rise under these arrangements. Supplementary. Supplementary question, the Honourable David Parker. Will this latest review examine the role of Mr Joyce, the former minister, in crafting the legislation and awarding the contract to Chorus? Honourable Amy Adams. Well, the independent uh, stream of advice that I have asked for today is about ensuring that the government and the wider community has good information as to whether or not the copper price set at this level would seriously undermine and threaten New Zealanders' ability to get ultra-fast broadband. That is certainly the indication that we have had, but some members, including some members in this House, have suggested that that is not right. We need good information to back up whether or not, as we suspect and as the advice we have had, will put it at risk. That is what this review is about. Mr Speaker. Point of order. The all, all very interesting, but not my question. Order. I heard the question. The difficulty I had was actually in hearing the answer accurately because of the noise coming from uh, opposition benches here. If the member has further supplementaries, that's uh, the way to get the answer he wants. Uh, point, of, point, point of order. If, if, the, if the Speaker could not hear the answer and therefore could not judge whether the question was addressed, the Speaker should have brought the House into order. My point of order is I did hear the answer and my question was not addressed. Well, I, the bits of the answer I heard, because it was difficult to hear, was I believe the question was addressed, maybe not to the satisfaction, but it would certainly assist if the Deputy Leader of the Opposition could ask for his party to support him, so that when he asks the question, the question can be answered without a level of interjection. Order! <laughs> not much point in looking behind yourself. It would certainly be assisted if we had a level of interjection that was substantially less than is occurring this particular day, mainly from the Labour opposition benches. Point of order, Mr Speaker. Point of order. I have some difficulty being told that my point of order is out of order because the, the Speaker could not hear the answer to assess whether it could be addressed order. and then be told that it's my fault. Order. The member maybe misheard me or maybe misunderstood me. I said I didn't hear all of the answer because of the level of interjection. I asked for the member's assistance with his uh, colleagues to try and minimise the level of uh, interjection. I then said whilst I didn't hear all of the answer, what I did hear from it led me to believe the question had been addressed. I accept it may not be to the satisfaction of the member, but the way forward is not to raise a point of order saying that Kirsten has not been answered the way the member wanted it to be answered. The way forward is the member to rise to his feet and ask a further searching supplementary question. Supplementary question, Claire Curran. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Will her review announced today include examination of whether any private or other assurances were given to parent company Telecom and or Chorus during the demerger 
and UFB tendering processes that led them to believe that there would not be a fall in copper prices? And if not, why not? Honourable Amy Adams. Mr. Speaker, the review is not my review. I have asked for an independent review to be provided to government, which I have indicated I will release to the public. What that will look at is whether Chorus is reasonably able to be expected to complete its contractual obligations to provide UFB. That is what it will look at. It won't go into any opposition conspiracy theories. Que oh, supplementary question, uh, Claire Current. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. How has her decision? to undertake a narrow, specific and possibly illegal review of the 2011 Telco Act three years before it was due, bypassing the Commerce Commission's legal process of reviewing copper broadband pricing, created more certainty. And is it not so that her tactics between last December and now have failed, resulting in greater uncertainty about the future of both Chorus and the government's flagship UFB process? Honourable Amy Adams. Well, firstly, I reject uh, most of the allegations in that member's question, and secondly, no and no. <laughs> Supplementary question, Honourable David Parker. Why is the government creating investment uncertainty for other investors in telecommunication companies? And what measures has she put in place to ensure, ensure the review is not just a snow job to justify more corporate welfare or higher copper broadband prices? Honourable Amy Adams. Well, Mr Speaker, it seems to me that just yesterday the opposition were demanding an independent right. look into the uh, affairs and numbers of course. Actually, that's something that I signalled two days earlier we were going to do. That is what we are now doing. So is it their position that we shouldn't uh, actually ask independent questions? Regardless, we make decisions... Order. We make decisions. That's right. We're not the ENR party on this side. We make decisions based on information and analysis. Where that information is challenged, and we think it's a matter of significant public interest as this is, we are happy to get further independent analysis. We're happy to release that publicly. This will help inform the debate and get New Zealanders focused on the question of, is this Order. copper the, price the worth putting at risk broadband? Question number okay. six, Claudette Hawiti. Tēnā koe, Mr Speaker. Tēnā koe. My question is to the Minister for the Environment and asks, what announcements has the government...